Connecticut just held its annual high school track championship for the second year in a row, so it's a trend. In the women's events, the standout performers were two biological males. Drea Yearwood says even as a child, she identified as a girl. Yearwood is a sophomore at Cromwell High School. Born a boy, she's now transitioning and runs track and field on the girls' team. She and Bulkley High School sophomore Terry Miller swept the competition at the girls' track and field state championships last week. Miller is also transgender. Some parents and athletes say the first and second place finishers have an unfair advantage and they want a level playing field. This is an increasingly common story. The U.S. has long been a global leader in giving sporting opportunities to women, but now biological males are increasingly intruding on that space. Some women object, but those who say so out loud find themselves punished. Even tennis legend Martina Navratilova has been. She was just kicked out of a gay rights group for objecting to the transgender takeover of women's sports. Lesbian activist Julia Beck suffered a similar fate as she described on this show recently. In many states, men can legally identify themselves as female and gain access to women's single-sex spaces. And sports is just one institution where men are taking titles, scholarships, um, and this is a problem. Many women like myself have been pushed out of spaces that, that we built, spaces that are intended to include us, simply because we acknowledge biological reality. Piers Morgan is an editor at large for DailyMail.com, and we're proud to have him tonight. Piers, you're not allowed to say that you're against this. Martina Navratilova, if anyone you'd think would have license to give her opinion on women's sports, and she can't, she was punished. What is your view of this? Well, I'm with Martina Navratilova, and I think the way she's been treated is extremely worrying, Tucker, because all she said, and bearing in mind, she's probably one of the leading advocates for gay rights that America has ever seen. Yes. She's somebody who herself employed Rennie Richards, who was a transgender. She was the first major transgender coach who employed her, Martina Ravatilova. So this is a woman who's been at the forefront of fighting for rights for gay people and transgender people. But here's the rub with this. Martina's always taken a position that what she wants is fairness and equality. And in her column she wrote last week for a London newspaper, she made the very, I think, obvious point, which is there's nothing fair or equal about what is now going on in women's sport. If you allow people who were born biologically male, and I completely accept that transgender people say, look, you know, I was in the wrong gender, the wrong body, I want to transition, I completely respect that, I have no issue with that. Uh, and it's not bigoted, by the way, to, to say that you have an issue with what's going on with the sport, as some of them like to claim. But, but here's what Martina said. She said, look, he, you could have a situation where a male athlete in tennis or golf or one of the sports that relies a lot on perhaps power and size, a male athlete who's maybe number 200 in the world and earning not much money, that he might decide to decide that he wants to be a woman purely for financial gain, that he can then just have some hormone treatment, doesn't need to have any surgery, and he can then take part in women's sport, win vast amounts of money, and perhaps after two or three years simply go back uh, and be a man again. And that would be a corrupt thing to do. It would be uh, the wrong thing to do, unethical and, frankly, cheating, as Martina says. But that doesn't mean it can't happen. And I, that's what really worries me about this. They haven't thought this through about what the consequence will be if you simply allow anybody to identify as male or female. What I'm confused by is why they shut down the conversation over the details, which are the, the most important part, as you just suggest. What does it mean to change biological genders? Is, you know, what is the threshold? Saying you're changing, clearly that can't be a standard we can live with. So what is the standard? If you even ask that question, you are shouted down. And in the case of Navratilova, you're punished. Mm. Well, she was uh, thrown off a charity, which she was uh, a big advocate for. Uh, she's been vilified on social media to the extent that she basically silenced herself and said, I'm taking myself out of this debate. She's now indicated she may talk about this again later this week, perhaps. And I hope she does. I hope she doesn't back down and doesn't succumb to the mob on this, because it's not transphobic to express a concern about what is going on in women's sports. In fact, what it is, is unfair and unequal to young women, to girls who've been competing at a certain level and maybe have great aspirations to win sporting scholarships or turn professional, who are now seeing themselves 
coming down the line, down the ladder, down the rung, and disadvantaged purely through biology, because they're physically not able to compete with these young transgender women who, as we can see from that picture, are tall and powerful and have grown up in male biological bodies. And that's an issue that I think ought to be discussed rationally and calmly. I would urge transgender communities in America and around the world to be sensible about this and say, OK, there is an issue here. And we need to address that issue without vilifying anyone, particularly supporters like Martina Ratlova, because that doesn't get anybody anywhere. I mean, it's bullying, really, is what they're engaged in. It's not enough, it sounds like, to say, I want to stand up for the rights of women and girls. It used to be that was a conversation ender. I'm here on behalf of women and girls. Listen to me. Now, nobody cares. Why? Well, you know, you know, Tucker, I had an interesting conversation with Caitlyn Jenner, who, of course, as Bruce Jenner, was the Olympic decathlete gold medal winner at the Olympics for America, and is now Caitlyn Jenner a woman. And she told me that when she plays golf now, bear in mind she's two inches taller than me, and I'm six foot one. She's six foot three, I think, Caitlyn Jenner, and powerfully built. Uh, she plays golf. And when she plays golf now, she now plays off the women's tees. Now, if you play golf, you know that that means she gets a 50-yard or so advantage on every hole if she plays me. And yet this is somebody who won the male decathlon gold medal at the Olympics. And I said to Caitlin, well, how can that be fair? And she kind of acknowledged that it gave her an unfair advantage if she played against other women yeah. in particular, or against men as well, frankly. Um, so it's just an unfairness and inequality is what my concern is. It's not about disrespecting yes. transgender rights. No, it's of course about not. saying yeah, to transgender people, come on, it's not fair. It's a very smart point. In the name of equality, we make things less equal. In the name of fairness, they become profoundly unfair. Piers Morgan, is, everything you said was common sense, and it's brave of you to say it, so I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, we're going to get, you know what, Tucker, we're going to get attacked uh, just for having the debate. And that is also <laughs> one of the major problems with this. You know, we know I we agree. are, right? Already, Luckily, we're probably, I don't we're care. Probably, we're, probably, well, we're probably trending already. I don't care either. We're probably trending already for just having a debate about right. this. There's a, you're running a little banner there. Check. Piers Morgan we got to go to Hannity. He's in, um, he's <laughs> thanks, Piers.